Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tech Gamers World. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily taxi and communicate with air traffic control and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Let's do this. Okay everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of taxiing and communicating with air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this is the main menu of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and this is being played on a Microsoft Xbox Series X with a Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTUS 1 flight stick and the normal Microsoft Xbox wireless controller. So let's get it started. So what we're going to do here is go to world map. We're going to zoom all the way out here. We're going to go ahead and select our departure. I like to use Newark airport as a good runway for training and demonstrations, a good airport, I should say, as it has a lot of areas to taxi and some pretty nice runways. So we're going to select Newark Liberty International Airport, whose call sign is KEWR. I don't know why I just decided to disappear there. There it goes. Okay. So here is the suggested takeoff point set by the game runway 4L. Now, you can leave it defaulted to that and it'll put you right on the runway. But if you like that real authentic experience, I recommend selecting a gate to leave from. There's gate A, B, C. If you've ever been to Newark Airport before, there are three different terminals, A, B, and C. So we're gonna select gate C here. We'll use, I'm gonna say, Gate 74 here is a nice one. This will be our departure point. And we're going to be flying today in a Boeing 747-8. I selected the Emerald Gold option here as for the livery. Okay, so we are ready to go here. So let's go ahead and fly. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you the basics of taxiing a plane, including how to get pushback from the gate, how to get and communicate with air traffic control. I am not going to show you in this video how to start up an airplane. If you'd want to see detailed uh, videos on how to start up airplanes in Microsoft Flight Simulator, check out some of my other YouTube videos under the Microsoft Flight Simulator playlist. I have a bunch of videos there highlighting how to start some of the more popular planes in this amazing game. Just waiting for it to load here. All right, so we are ready to fly. Okay, we are at the gate. So let's get this started here. So here we are sitting at the gate and everything is turned off. So the first thing we need to do is power up the plane. So like I said, I'm not gonna be showing you the detailed steps on how to power up a plane and get it ready for flight. In this video, this is merely a demonstration of taxiing and air traffic control communications. So I'm gonna use the checklist to start up the plane here. And once we have turned the power on, air traffic control will become available. Page complete. So let's get ready for pre-flight. Auto complete. We can request our taxis. So I'm going to depart to the east. Newark ground tech number 1123 with Quebec request taxi for takeoff departure to the east. So we'll be taking off from runway four left. 
So as long as you understood what they said and you noted it all, you can go ahead and hit acknowledge taxi clearance. So I need to contact the tower on 1183. Taxi to and hold short runway for left via taxiway Alpha Papa Alpha 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 Tecumer 1123. So the next step is to contact Newark Tower on 1183. which we have done. And now we can request ground services, but we are not ready to do that yet. So taxiing in Microsoft Flight Simulator during the day is semi-easy, depending on where you're at and how busy the airport is. Taxiing at night during rain, snow, fog is a lot trickier, but it makes the game you know, that much more fun to do all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead here and select our next autocomplete. And we are ready to start up the engines. So once you've gotten to the point of starting up the engines, you can go ahead and do that and then request pushback from ground services. So let's go ahead here and select ground services and tuned to Newark ground. We are tuned into Newark ground. So let's request Newark pushback. Ground, Tecumer, one, one, two, three, requesting pushback. Tecumer, one, one, two, three, pushback request accepted. So now that we are in pushback mode, you want to make sure that your parking brake is turned off. Otherwise, you'll notice that the plane won't move. Engines are still not yet started, but we can see that pushback tug is getting in position. Planes are starting up. They're each at 4%, 5% now. And while we're waiting on that, we basically just let it sit and monitor your gauges, get your lighting ready, all that stuff in preparation for flight. So this part takes some time here. You have to wait until everything is checked and ready. Check for any failures, you know, the usual stuff that you would expect. So because I'm going to be heading to runway 4L, I'm probably going to have the request the pushback steer me to the right. So it's all opposite. Right is actually left facing forwards. You'll know when you're starting to push back when if you have the controller in your hand, you'll feel it uh, start to vibrate. All right, page is complete. So let's go ahead here and do our before taxi checklist. Always want to make sure you auto-complete all this stuff, because if you ever forget something, if you're not a, a pro, then the checklist will take care of that for you, because sometimes you can find out the hard way. So we are good on the checklist for now. So before takeoff, we'll do when we get in position. And as you can see, we are being pushed back. So always want to pay attention to what's going on behind you. Right now, there's nothing. So as we get pushed out more, I'll request the pushback steer me to the right. So when you're taxiing in this game, you're not looking for perfection. You need to get to the runway and take off. This isn't real life. So you don't have to be 100% accurate in what you do. Just don't go too fast. Don't crash into anyone or anything. Try not to drive off the taxiway. Stuff like that. A good way to tell when it's time to turn to the right is to follow that line. See the line on the taxi on the floor, ground there? That line will help you kind of navigate where you're at. Keep the front of it. And you can kind of use that line as a guide 
pretend, kind of imagine it going through your front wheel there. There's always a line on every, uh, around every parking spot. So I'm going to request pushback steer to the right. So watch the pushback tug. Turns his wheel and in turn is turning us. And then when he's ready, when you like where your position is relative to where you have to taxi, you can request pushback stop, which I'm going to do shortly here. Just obviously, again, being cognizant of the people around you so we can see that plane right behind us. He's waiting for us. So we can request pushback stop. All right. Okay. So now we are ready to get this plane moving. So let's go back here to clearances. What I like to do, if you don't know your relative position to where you are, you can always look up here and bring up the nav log or any of the co-pilot stuff to help you out. The map, etc. So VFR map is really helpful in determining in tracking and taxiing. You can zoom in. You can see your relative position to where you are. So because I'm going to be heading just straight down this taxiway here, I don't actually need that yet. So let's get this plane moving, shall we? So nice and slow, just bring up the throttle a little. So you don't actually do much with the flight stick here other than just feather the joystick back and forth to get you moving here. And you can see we are moving forward. Nice and slow. And when you're ready, go ahead and just bring the throttle up more. So the bigger the plane, it takes a little more to get you moving. And it also takes you longer to stop. So keep that in mind when you are taxiing. So I'm actually going to bring back up that VFR map here just to show you what's going on. So you gotta be, like I said, once you get moving, you know you're moving. It'll warn you about excessive taxi speed, just like that. So you can tap your brakes, which in my case is B2. So I'm going to go ahead and make a turn up here to show you what a turn is like. Here we'll turn on to the next part of the
So basically what we're doing is just following parallel to the runway there. You can see the runway up ahead of me. So because I slowed down, I now have to speed back up again. So you can see there are some planes lined up on the other side of the runway because we're probably all sharing the same uh, runway here. And we are moving. So engines are about 46%. Just nice and slow. Take your time. It's not a rush. If you rush, you're going to end up driving off the taxiway and either breaking your plane or getting stuck. So we're going to slow it down up here because we're going to make a left-hand turn onto runway 4L. So when they tell you to hold short of the runway, that means you have to stop where that line is, which is what we're going to do right here. So we're going to start to begin our turn. to get lined up on runway 4L. Just kind of feather it here a little bit so I could turn a little more. There's a lot of people flying today. All right, so we'll hold short right here. So all forward movement is stopped. And we are ready to request our takeoff clearances. So basically what that's saying is the runways are in use. And we can't do anything yet. So I've switched to Newark ATIS. We're going to request takeoff clearance. Newark Tower Tech Gamer 1123 ready for east departure at runway for left. Tech Gamer 1123 altimeter tree 0 decimal 27 wind calm traffic is generic on final. Caution the generic taking off runway for right. East departure approved. All right, 
So we have gotten our takeoff clearance. And there we go. So from this point on, you can either close air traffic control or leave it open. I'm going to go ahead and close it. We can also go ahead here and close the VFR map because I no longer need it. And we are ready to take off this airplane. So let's get that going here. So we want to go ahead here and move forward onto the runway. Very important that you make sure you do exactly what I did and request all your takeoff clearances because if you go onto the runway without requesting uh, permission, you'll create what's called a runway incursion and where it'll uh, pretty much end the uh, flight for you. So but make sure you don't do that. So let's go ahead here and turn on to runway 4L. And let's throttle down, continue turning our wheel to flight stick to the right, throw the rudder there. And we are lined up on runway 4L for takeoff. So let's go ahead here and switch to the cockpit view. Flaps are set as 10%. We have all of our clearances and we are ready to fly. So to do that, we're going to bring the throttle up to 100%, which will bring the engines ramped up to the highest level of rated thrust. And we'll see the airspeed indicator on the bottom left and on the cockpit will start moving. So our airspeed is alive there. We are at 40, passing 50. So again, the larger planes take a little longer to get moving. Oh, we're moving here. Just want to keep it in the center of the runway. So we have V1, we're rotating. As you can see, we are airborne. So we have a positive rate here. Let's go ahead and put the gear up. the landing gear is on its way up so that's it we are airborne so hope everybody enjoyed this video as a recap here wait till that stops so as a recap i showed you how to taxi and use air traffic control communications to get airborne hope everybody enjoyed this video as always if you'd like to see anything or need any help with microsoft flight simulator Please click that like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and let me know what you need, and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I will see you around. Keep on gaming.